Oh, apologies. We're already on air, I'm told. I wasn't able to get that cue uh, from Johannesburg, but we're here at the Izigo Southern African Museum, uh, the Department of Science and Innovation today, launching that event that only comes up on the 6th of December at the International uh, uh, Convention Center here in Cape Town. But just to speak about the significance of being here, let's just bring into the conversation the uh, comms manager at the Izigo South Africa uh, uh, Museum, Ms. Melody Klein smith Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, just the significance of this area in terms of your multiple partnerships with the Department of Science and Innovation in trying to uh, let communities connect with science. Tell us about that. Good morning. Um, yes, the Zika South African Museum here in Cape Town houses more than 10 million objects and specimens of scientific importance. And these specimens are used for generating new bodies of knowledge and as evidence for scientific research, not only by our curators, but visiting researchers mm -hmm. um, from all over the world. So through our research, our relationships and partnerships, we are able to bring to the public um, the information that we learn and to make it accessible to not only South Africans, but to everybody in the world through our exhibitions and public programs. Yeah, in fact, uh, the uh, background here that we have uh, behind us is quite an interesting depiction um, of the basis of science and phys physics. Tell us about it. Well, this is an illustration of the periodic table of elements, and it is part of an exhibition called Plot, Critical Zones, by an artist, Jeanette Unite, um, which is currently housed in the Zika South African Museum. And one of the reasons why an art exhibition is housed here in a natural history museum is because of the transdisciplinary nature of art, science, and our conversations and public engagement. Yeah, let's bring in Guy Brooke. Uh, Guy, thank you so much. You, made, uh, you came here all the way from Harare because that's where you're based. Uh, Guy is with the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, uh, UNESCO. Uh, what's UNESCO's role in this uh, whole process? Well, we're, we're a partner in the organization of the World Science Forum, which is, as you mentioned, starting on the 6th of, of December. And, and the forum stems from uh, a conference that was held in 1999 to think about science for the 21st century. How can science play a meaningful role in, in the challenges that we face this century? That conference concluded that it would be interesting to have a forum every two years. First, they were also held in Hungary, where the original conference was held. But then there was a decision to, to do it every two years, alternating in, in different countries. In different continents. So we've had Brazil, mm -hmm. we've had Jordan, and now South Africa has offered to organize and host the conference in December. What's the significance of this uh, conference as we try and make science relevant and palatable to uh, just applying it to our everyday lives, not only as South Africans, but just as a global conversation about science? Yes, well, I think the, the theme of the conference was probably decided uh, more than two years ago, science for social justice, but I think it's never been as appropriate as it is now. Uh, we face a number of, of crises in the world. We, uh, we have, of course, our climate crisis. We have uh, a million species threatened with Recent extinction. We have our pandemic. Uh, and we have conflict. Uh, we have tension between countries. So, so, and the world looks at science. And if you're South African, you would think unemployment. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, socioeconomic uh, challenges that, that we face. And I, I think uh, traditionally, the everyone looks at science uh, for solutions and uh, sometimes these solutions are or, or sometimes our science is not necessarily directed at solving social problems at creating social justice but uh, some science is just for the interest of science which may be valuable in the future but we we do want to try and see how can we focus the, the science that we do on today's problems including in south africa including in africa so just, uh, uh, Melody, for the museum itself, it has 
an impressive culturally enriching collection which brings into mind the Madiba installation which we're going to be having a conversation from later on here on SABC News where we're going to have a panel to talk about different aspects of implications of science on South Africa. Just give, take us through the different aspects of the museum and its different target markets. Like I, I went to another part where you can see that the target is a younger audience. Just take us through all of those aspects. Well, our museums are multicultural and dynamic spaces. I think that there's a very distinct misconception that museums are about showing and displaying. Whereas at Ezekiel Museums, we are looking to ignite the conversation. And the Tata Madiba exhibition that you'll be having the panel discussion in is one such activation space. It is a conversation station that taps into the legacy of Tata Madiba and his role as an ambassador for biodiversity and policy making related to the sciences. So through this installation, we're hoping to create awareness, to activate the citizen scientists, and to ensure that the research that happens in behind the scenes as part of the museum's investigations um, become palatable to the general public so that they can understand their role, not just as citizens of this country, but as human beings and as members of this planet, so that we can also contribute and ensure that we in, um, look at our survival. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Brook, as we speak about social justice related to science, different countries have different problems. How one of the biggest issues that came out of a research, a research paper from UNESCO about research is just reaching out to young people and women in research conversations. What are the challenges there and where can we find solutions? Well, as you rightly mentioned, the, the challenges are different depending on, on countries and, and uh, report you're, you're probably quoting is the World Science Report that, that we try to also disseminate to, to, sh to show people a mirror of the situation, not, not to be negative, but just also for everyone to realize where are we, where, what are our challenges compared to other countries and where can we go. Um, women in science, for instance, is, is a, has been historically a, a problem. Science, I'm also standing here as a male, but mm -hmm. you will see later on many of the presenters will still be men. Uh, it's a reality. I think, I think in, particularly in, in Africa, we see that uh, at, at undergraduate, graduate and, and PhD level, we start to have a lot more women. Um, one anecdote that I found quite interesting is the, the pandemic that forced us to have lockdowns and actually proved that the theory that uh, women's hours, working hours, are not convenient to do science is actually flawed because we could all work from home suddenly. So that's actually an interesting breakthrough and, and unexpected. Um, but of course the, there are still efforts that, that need to be done. On the issue of youth, which is also particularly yeah. close to my heart, um, we actually at the, at the World Forum we will have uh, an, a side event where youth from Southern Africa will come to ask questions from the participants, questions about what they are interested in and, and where their future can go uh, in terms of science. Is science just for people in laboratories? Is there a future for rural youth uh, when it comes to scientific developments? Uh, so I imagine that will be part of the conversation, new discoveries in the world of science. Let's wrap up this conversation. Uh, Melody, just in terms of how you are going to use this event, uh, to just put out the work of Iziko and its significance in society? Well, I think one of the most important things that was mentioned is skills development. Iziko Museums and our science collections um, provide the spaces for emerging scientists and particularly women emerging scientists. So a lot of the foundational research takes place here, but also in terms of the youth and providing equitable access mm -hmm. to our nation's heritage resources. Yeah. Those are just some of the avenues that we wish to pursue in order to ensure that the public um, pr are afforded the opportunity to engage, to explore, and to discover.
and everybody's welcome to visit our museums. Awesome, and we hope we can reach that stage where we stop to be emerging and just be a, yes. an equal part of this. And guys, this will be my parting shot with you, just in terms of the conversation dealing with social justice, how to deal with uh, equity and getting yes. our citizens out of poverty and uh, the importance of research in this regard. But the, one of the concepts that will also come up in the uh, forum is, is the open science principle, which, which the, the principle that led to a recommendation about a year ago, um, a global recommendation, is that science should be accessible for should the results of science should be accessible for everyone yeah. it's not just science for the few and everyone should be able to participate in science also as you talked about citizen science uh, we all do science in one way or another so so that should also be valuable people people monitor what happens around them yeah. and also everyone should have access to science everyone should be able to publish because we we all know that uh, for someone here to publish a paper is much more complicated than someone based in New York or something. Uh, well, I suppose, I hope that gives us just a taste uh, of what's to come up uh, later on on SABC News when we'll have a panel about the upcoming uh, Science uh, Global Forum that will be taking place in Cape Town from the 6th to the 9th of December. That conversation will take place much later on around Kotopasnan. We'll be talking to the Deputy, uh, the Director General as the, at the Science uh, uh, Department uh, and Innovation, Dr. Phil Mjoa. Professor Muniba Isaacs and Dr. Josia Kara and Mr. Ronald Engelbrecht, who's from the Western Cape Department of Education. Hope you join us for that conversation. For now, let's take it back to Johannesburg.